So, ladies and gentlemen, dear music education lovers, uh, my name is Timo Klemetin and I'm, I'm happy to bring here greetings from Finnish Musical Association and the Finnish Music Council. Uh, let me first say my deepest gratitude for the New York, New York Philharmonic's educational department and especially Theodore uh, Biperud. It's a great honor to be here and, and have an opportunity to tell about Finnish music education. Uh, I hope actually, can you see the slides, both sides? There's quite a lot of light here, so it might be a bit difficult, but I hope you can see it. So, I feel that it's, it's almost like mission impossible for me to give you an overview in 30 minutes, but I try to do my best to give you some kind of idea what, what is this Finnish music education system actually? What is this uh, funding and legislation, things behind the music education in Finland? Uh, but first, a little, a little bit of history about Finland. So, uh, I think if you think about Finnish musical life, we cannot enough underline the fact that uh, the culture was uh, like a basic for the Finnish independence. As the Finns, we thought that uh, without own culture and Finnish language, we won't, won't have own independent country. And I don't know how well you know about Finnish history, but we have been like a ping pong balls between uh, Russian and Sweden, and always Finland has been as a battlefield for the numerous wars between Russian and Sweden, and, and so that's our history. And I think that still today explains a lot about uh, the respectation of cu about culture in Finland. And, of course, we have to mention always Jan Sibelius, or as you pronounce it, Sibelius here in, in States. Uh, 96 was, I think, the most remarkable year in Finland. So Finnish music schools got own legislation and, and also funding legislation. And I have to say that it has a huge influence for all musical activities in Finland. And uh, I think during that time, there was about 11, 12 music schools in whole country. And today we have 99. And that's, you, you can understand how huge grow, years of growth has been in Finland in 70s and 80s. And after the Second World War, which was very hard against Russian and Finland could kept, as we know today, the independency, there was a lack of everything, uh, poor economy, and uh, also in musical life, we really didn't have skillful orchestra players. We didn't have uh, good teachers to teach kids. So the primary goal for the music education was to, to provide, uh, to produce skillful musicians. And nowadays, in 2007, we can say that uh, that primary goal uh, has been fulfilled, as achieved, and, and uh, there's more and more room to give uh, room for different kind of uh, multicultural things and uh, per young, youngsters all around personality development. Once we are here in, in, in uh, America, I think it is very important to give some time to talk about public funding. Because I know that's something which is really not that belongs here in States. Uh, just if you think about Finland as a country, it's a big country. 338,000 square kilometers and only 5.27 million inhabitants. It's about the same if you look at Brooklyn, Bronx and, and Queens. That's about the population in Finland. And, and if we think about cultural life, uh, orchestras or music education, it's, it's really easy to understand that without public funding, we wouldn't have actually cultural life. There's no question about it. It's, it's, of course, it's, it's a political question, but it's also, if in a sense of cultural life, it's, it's, it's very important to understand that, that public funding, without public funding, we, we really wouldn't have any cultural life, hardly not, no cultural life in Finland. But still, we have this big question, which is ongoing uh, process. To what extent should the government support music education arranged outside school, and what should individuals be ready to pay to pursuing music as a hobby. It tends, in Finland also, it, the tendency is that uh, the families, families are paying more and more for music education. And 
that's of course very challenging for the Finnish musicals. Uh, because of the lack of time, I have, I think, some, something like 23 slides here, so I jump some slides over because I would like to give some more time for other, some other things. So music schools in any country, not only in Finland, are guided by legislation or there is none legislation at all. A national curriculums or an examination systems, funding, the values of society, traditions naturally, teachers training is, is very important and also assessment both internal and external evaluation and finally parents and students. The following slides I will give a, uh, have a look a little, little bit more carefully about these headlines and start with legislation. Uh, the two last point I think it's most important. Our association which I'm representing here, Finnish Musical Association, we have been uh, taking care about examination and evaluation guidelines and it's I think it, it's remarkable to know that uh, from it's, it doesn't matter which part in Finland you live, it can, it, in Helsinki or even in Lapland, the system is basically very same. And uh, it's interesting because uh, if you look at the history in, in Finnish music schools, none of Finnish music school was founded by the state or municipality. There was always behind some group of people or enthusiastic music lover, individual people who uh, thought that it's just important to have music school in our city. And uh, also, which I think it's, it's very interesting in Finland, that once they founded these music schools, it was never a political question. It wasn't even, if, if you think the, from left wing to right wing, all political parties were supporting music schools. 